Hey guys, how you doing? It's me, Vance. Um, if my hair looks a bit messy, please excuse me. It's just that, you know, it's another windy day and, you know, when I record videos outside and the wind's blowing hard, chances are that my hair is going to get messed up. So I decided that I'm going to make more vlog videos because I enjoy making vlog videos. I enjoy talking about myself and sharing my experiences with you guys. And I just, I just love telling stories and especially if they're based on real life events. And if I'm telling stories about things that have taken place in my own life, you know that those are real life events. So about two years ago, I made a vlog where I was talking about the possibility of me becoming a subdeacon in the Anglican Church. And this is pretty much a, a follow-up video in regards to that vlog that I made two years ago. And with that being said, there are some details that I don't remember because I don't really think too much about the past. I try and focus on the present and how my present is going to lead me into the future. That's my main focus. I don't think about I don't think about the past too much. So to let you guys know, I am not a subdeacon. I'm still a normal average parishioner or lay person, whatever term you may want to use if you're a religious individual. And for those of you who are secular, in other words, non-religious, who you wonder, you know, who who certain people are in a church, you know, I'm basically just the average Joe who sits in the pews. Um, actually, that's kind of, I don't want to say it's a fit, but it's just, you see what happened was, I eventually left the church that I was a member of, or at least I was just going to, but still had the honor and privilege of serving as a lay minister at the altar at this um, church. The church that I went to was the uh, St. Patrick's Anglican Cathedral in Port St. John in Florida, which is close to where Cocoa Beach is. Now, I've gone there for at least a period of a year and a half. I could be wrong about that. No, 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 no. Actually, I would say about maybe a year and a half. So I haven't been there long, but it felt like I've been there for a while. And I pretty much left that church for different reasons. Reason number one is that my work schedule prevented me from going to church on Sundays, as I mentioned before in a previous vlog. Reason number two is that there was a uh, tragedy that took place in my family, resulting in the death of someone in my family, my step-grandfather, who was the second husband of my grandmother, and ha us having to move our my grandmother here with us down here to Florida and she was pretty much at an age and she gone through some situations where she was very weak and very feeble and she just could not live by herself. She needed someone to look after her, which is why we moved her down here to Florida with us. And the third reason, which is the number one reason why I stopped going to that church was due to unreconcilable differences between the bishop and myself. Not that we couldn't reconcile our differences. Not that we couldn't reconcile our differences, but I just felt that, you know, he and I had certain differences that, you know, to even talk about them would just... I just didn't feel like there was a possibility of reconciliation, at least as far as I'm concerned. So, basically... I mentioned before in a previous video that, you know, certain situations have taken place where my job required me to work on Sundays, only giving me Thursdays and Fridays off. It pretty much all got started when I requested a transfer from one position at my job to another just for the purpose of making things a little bit easier for myself since things were somewhat getting complicated, or at least I felt they were getting complicated and too much for me to bear. And I just decided that I wanted to transfer to a position where it was a bit easier and more laid back, which it was, but unfortunately I didn't realize that this guy, this manager, proprietor, whatever you want to call him, would require me to work on weekends because this particular place where I was working, you know, expected large crowds to come in on weekends and needed me to be there to assist in any cleanup that was necessary. So... It wasn't too bad of a loss because this particular church that I was going to, the St. Patrick's Anglican Cathedral, um, they did have Friday services at 9 in the morning, if I'm not mistaken. And so it kind of worked. It was basically me, another parishioner, and the bishop. 
and it, it kind of worked. But like I said, you know, I had unreconcilable differences with the bishop, which made me feel like I couldn't be a part of that church anymore. But I'm getting ahead of myself. What I want to do is I want to explain the uh, situation about a member of our family dying, resulting in my grandmother being moved down here to Florida to live with us. Around this particular point, you know, the talk about me possibly becoming a subdeacon in the church was that I was invited to go to a synod, and I don't remember where it was supposed to be held, if it was supposed to be held in Massachusetts or if it was supposed to be held in Pennsylvania, but somewhere up north. And, you know, I was supposed to go with one of the priests, who was a friend of mine at the time, to go up by flight, by plane, to the synod, you know, where I could, you know, get a feel for how everything works in the church as far as the members of the clergy or holy orders is concerned. And, you know, I had my family tragedy, and this priest also had his. It wasn't so much of a tragedy, but, you know, his wife became ill. I forgot exactly what it was. I don't know. I don't think it was a brain tumor. Like I said, I don't remember exactly what it was, but his wife was ill, and he felt that he needed to stay home and look after his wife, so... And I didn't really feel comfortable about going someplace where I wasn't familiar with and where I didn't have someone who was probably there before to, you know, help me find my way in Massachusetts or Pennsylvania. And like I said, my step-grandfather passed away and left my grandmother alone. And, you know, she went through a lot of surgeries and doctor appointments and she, she had a virus and, you know, she was just at a certain age where she just wasn't the woman that she used to be. Even though she always tried to get up and do more work around the house, she had that spirit and that will, but her body was just, her body was just at a, it just reached a point to where, you know, she couldn't do things like she used to. And she couldn't be alone. She just could not be alone. So the family decided that it was best to bring her down here to live with us in Florida. And I honestly couldn't, you know, there had to be at least one person to stay in the house to watch over grandma to make absolutely sure that if heaven forbid the worst happened, there would be someone there to help her in her time of need. So if my mom and dad had to go out, you know, if they wanted to go out to get dinner or if they had errands to run, whatever it was that they were doing, I needed to be home and look after her. So even if I decided I still wanted to go to that synod in Massachusetts or Pennsylvania, it just wouldn't work out because grandma would have been home alone and heaven forbid something would happen to her. No one was here to help her. So that's why I didn't go to that synod. And just in case if you're wondering, if you're wondering what a synod is, it's pretty much a, it's a meeting of bishops. You know, bishops in a particular church that come together to meet and discuss church business. Something like that. Now, the reason why I left St. Patrick's Anglican Cathedral, I had some unreconcilable differences with the bishop. What happened was that, you know, I'm a conservative and he was a liberal, politically speaking. And I had my moments where I was making certain comments on Facebook about, you know, conservative issues. You know, I was mainly focusing on abortion and I'm pro-life and I will let my voice be heard when it comes to pro-life issues and abortion issues. And this bishop, you know, he publicly commented on one of my posts saying, if you want to be admitted to holy orders, you need to stop commenting on political and controversial issues. This is not a suggestion. So pretty much he was giving me an ultimatum. And I felt disturbed by that. I kind of mellowed down for a while, but I wanted to look into this. You know, I wanted to know, did this bishop have the right to do what he just did? You know, so I was thinking about writing the, the primate, which is another word for the head bishop of this particular Anglican group that I was a member of, 
to see what he had to say about, you know, certain things. And if heaven forbid, I would have to leave this particular church to join another church where they would be more open, you know, where they would understand that I have freedom of speech and I want to exercise freedom of speech. And especially when I feel like that my country and everything that my country stands for is hanging in the balance. And I feel that as a, an American citizen, it's my patriotic duty to take a stand and protest. Kind of like how Michael Stivick, in one episode of All in the Family, for those of you who were watching TV in the 1970s, you may be more familiar with this show, All in the Family. There's one episode where Michael Stivick, a more liberal character, you know, he tells Archie Bunker, who's a more conservative character, you know, he tells Archie that he loves America no different than Archie does. And because Michael Stivick loves America so much, he protests when he feels that things are wrong. And even though I'm a conservative, not an ultra conservative like Archie Bunker, but still at least moderate, a moderate conservative to say the least, I still feel that it is my responsibility as an American citizen, whether someone asks me to or not, if I feel like things are wrong in this country, I need to protest and I need to make my voice heard. Now, to do it peacefully, you know, if there's anything that we need to learn from Martin Luther King Jr. is that when you're protesting, you gotta do it peacefully because otherwise you're just gonna kill your cause. So I had thoughts about, you know, leaving this church and going to another church where I would feel like, you know, I'm not, you know, I won't be backed into a corner and people would tell me, okay, Vance, if you wanna be a priest, then you're gonna have to stop doing this, you're gonna have to stop doing that. And if these are things that I do because it's a part of who I am, you know, that's not a church that I want to be a member of. So, you know, what really gets under my skin about this bishop that I'm talking about, you know, the bishop who was the bishop of the St. Patrick's Anglican Cathedral in Port St. John, was that, you know, he tells me, you know, he didn't. He didn't just tell me, you know, he has informed all the other clergymen who serve as clergymen in this church that they need to not comment on things that are political and controversial. And yet what's ironic is that this bishop, no, actually ironic's not the right word to use. The, the right word to use is hypocritical, hypocritical, is that he tells people like me not to comment on political and controversial issues on social media. But yet there have been days where I was scrolling through Facebook and I have seen posts that this bishop has made where he, he makes his liberal comments about gun control and the border wall that Donald Trump was trying to build. You know, obviously anti-Trump, obviously liberal, obviously anti-gun and you know, it wasn't so much the fact that he was a liberal who had liberal beliefs that bothered me. That wasn't what bothered me. What bothered me was that this guy, this bishop, an ultimate authority figure in the church, was telling me that if I wanted to eventually become a priest, that I need to stop making controversial political comments on social media. And yet this same bishop goes on Facebook and he makes his own politically controversial comments where he expresses his views and opinions about gun control, immigration reform, and the border wall that Donald Trump was trying to build. That's what got to me the most. Now, as I've mentioned before in this vlog, I kind of mellowed down, not making any comments about political issues, and especially with my YouTube videos. But when Donald Trump was impeached for the first time, this was in late 2019, before Christmas, if I'm not mistaken. When Donald Trump got impeached, I just knew that I, I had to I had to start over again. Not start over again, that's not what I meant. I had to 
get back on the horse, so to speak. I had to get back to that habit of expressing my views and my opinions when it comes to political topics. And needless to say that this particular Christmas, I got a Donald Trump puppet for as a gift. And it's the same Donald Trump puppet that you guys have been seeing in my Ventriloquist Vance videos throughout 2020. And I was so proud of this gift that I got for Christmas, being a pro-Trump supporter. I took pictures of this puppet and posted those pictures on Facebook. And this was on the 26th. This was before my birthday. This was the night before my birthday. And that bishop that I was talking about, he commented on one of those pictures and he said, don't bring that to church. It was at that moment when I decided, you know what? I've had enough with all this nonsense. I'm sick and tired of being under a bishop who thinks it's okay to talk to me the way that he's talking to me, and especially publicly on my Facebook wall for everybody to see. You know? I wanna end the video right now because my, my cell phone camera can only record so much video footage and, you know, depending on how long my videos are, it takes a long time to upload to YouTube. So I'm just going to stop the video right now. I'll pick up where I left off, and I'll, I'll tell you more about what happened after that. So I'll see you guys later. I'm actually burning in the sun right now, so I'll see you all later. Bye.